Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to Car Audio Fabrication. I gotta set this down. That's better. When you're starting a new car audio build, you're of course going to need wiring and wiring accessories, and that's what's in that box. Now the question comes up, when you're doing a big build with multiple amplifiers, maybe a digital signal processor, multiple speakers, subwoofers, a big build like that, what all do you need? In a recent video, I used my iPad and I walked you guys through the design process of determining all the different things that needed to connect to each other and the different stuff that would be needed. And in this video, we're actually going to go over all those things and see the real world version. Before we get started, if you're new here, here on this channel I do car audio reviews, I do build log videos, and I do technique and knowledge videos to help you guys learn how to master car audio. If you enjoy that kind of thing, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. Let's jump on in to opening this box. Alright, so as you can tell, I got all of my stuff here from New Concepts. They are a show sponsor. Let's open it on up. Ready, ready, get ready for it, headphone users. So obviously we have a bunch of wires going around the outside here. Let's start with some of the accessories on the inside. And I'm gonna shift the box to the side, that way we can see this stuff in a little bit more detail. One more thing I promise, I did wanna show you guys, if you are new to the channel, that this is the install that I'm doing, that I'm showing you guys all this wiring stuff for. Three different amplifiers, a digital signal processor, it's going into a Jeep Grand Cherokee. To get up to speed with this build, check out what I'll be doing at this link here to the playlist of videos. First item here is the basic zero gauge a and inline fuse holder. So what is this for? Well, I'm going to have my main connection that goes from the battery to the distribution block for all the amplifiers. This fuse goes on that main wire. And as you can see, of course we can open it up and there's our large a &L fuse right there that we can remove and replace if need be. Now this stuff is in no particular order. And next up here, you can see that we have a bunch of heat shrinks and some lugs. When we terminate our connections on our wires, we're gonna be using things like these, these crimp on lugs. And in order to protect that connection, once this is crimped on the wire, we apply the heat shrink and we will shrink it down using a heat gun. I of course picked up some red for the positive leads and black for the ground leads. You can see that I have different sizes of these depending on the size of the wire. Now another thing that was in that small little package are these guys here. These are ground link terminals. And as you can see, they're about the size of a mini a &L fuse. So the point of these is when I need to turn a distribution block into a ground distribution block. In other words, on a ground wire, I don't need the fuse, so I can use these. In fact, what these can be used in is the next thing that I'm gonna show you guys. The things that I can use these ground links in are these right here. These are the different New Concepts basic distribution blocks. This larger size has two zero gauge wire inputs and two zero gauge wire outputs. And of course, you could put four gauge in there as well and have one zero gauge in. And then the smaller one, has two four gauge inputs and two four gauge outputs. And of course you could step down to eight gauge on the output side and have one four gauge in. Now, why do I need multiple different ones? I'm gonna open this up so I can show you. This came with a couple of different fuses along with the distribution block. Here's that ground link compared to the size comparison of a normal fuse. So you can see how we could use this for a ground application. And then if we have a positive wire going into this, we would of course use the fuse. Now, why do I need multiple of these? Well, as you can see on the input side, this solid side here, it has multiple different inputs. And the advantage of this is imagine that we have our wire connected to our battery on this right here. We can then daisy chain another one so that we have more than two outputs. Let's say we want four outputs for four different amplifiers or four different devices. We can have our wire going in here, and then we can daisy chain a wire from here to here, thus providing electricity to this distribution block as well. We would then have an open port that we could also connect to the battery or connect to a secondary battery. So there's a lot of different flexibility here. And what I really like about these is let's say that you install two into a vehicle and you decide further on down the line that you want to add another pair of amplifiers or more devices, you just get another one and add it in and daisy chain it into that circuit. Now, of course, of course, with that said, you do need to make sure that your wire is sized appropriately that is connected between the battery or batteries and your distribution center. So that works for the large ones and it also works for these smaller ones as well because you can see they have two inputs, two outputs too. 
Now, I know this is a no-brainer for most of you guys out there, but hey, maybe if you're new, you didn't know this. So the whole idea with fuses is so that you can protect the wiring. You don't want your wiring to short out and burn up your vehicle, so you need to size your fusing based on the wire sizes, as well as the equipment you're going to be using. These different fuses come in multiple different sizes. So as you can see, this is a 200 amp fuse, obviously, as it's labeled. And in this particular case, the one that's already on here is also a 200 amp fuse, but just take my word for it, there's multiple different sizes. So what do we have next here? Wiring. In fact, that's what the rest of this box is. I have tons of different wires I want to show you guys and explain the purpose of. But before we get into that, a real quick thank you to our sponsor. I'm able to determine exactly what I need for an install because I've been doing car audio for years. I know what wiring I need. I know what distribution blocks, that kind of thing. But this is a fairly complicated install. What if you are new to car audio and doing more of a basic install? Shabubaloo. This, my friends, is what you need, a New Concepts Amplifier Installation Kit. As you can see, this has everything conveniently sized for an average car audio install. I've got my power wire, I've got my fuse, I've got some protective loom to protect it in the engine bay, I've got an RCA signal wire to connect my amplifier to the head unit or my line output converter. I've got a remote turn-on wire, I've even got some speaker wire. Hey, look at this, I've got zip ties, I've got all the different little connections along with the fuses, everything that I need. Oops, there's so much stuff in here. I forgot to point this out too, even ground wire. These amplifier installation kits make it simple. They have all sorts of different wire sizes depending on the application. Definitely check them out at our show sponsor, newconcepts.com. So back to my install, the first thing that I have here is my 3.5 millimeter to 3.5 millimeter adapter cable. This is so I can connect my phone to the auxiliary input of the factory audio system. Now I know this is a pretty commonly available cable, but what's interesting to note here is this is part of New Concepts Crystal line. So take a good look here at the coloring of this wiring, the different shielding inside there, the way the end connections are styled. All of that design carries over to all of the different components that I'll be using. So for instance, this is a short cable that will connect between my digital signal processor and my amplifiers. It's an RCA signal cable. It's a twisted pair cable. You can see that the way these things look is very nice and consistent. For people like myself that really care about things looking similar throughout an install, this is nice. With all the different signal that I need to send between the DSP and the amplifiers, I have several different patch cables here. I've got five of the one meter version here, and I've got five of the half meter versions. So this gives me 10 channels for each of those. Have you ever seen so many RCA wires in your life? Whew. It's quite a bit. If you think this is a lot, wait till you see the power wire. Next up here, wham, speaker wire. This wire here is also twisted. It's nice and flexible. And this, of course, is to connect my amplifiers to the different speakers. Now, this wire size here, this is 14 gauge wire. So this is for all of my speakers. And this wire here, this is slightly larger. This is 12 gauge wire for the subwoofers. Now, I'm not sure if I mentioned it. This is the Karma wire. Now, this is 150 feet of wire. You'd be surprised how quick this wire goes when you have to connect to crossovers and then to eight different speakers. And this 12 gauge wire for the subwoofer, I picked up 20 feet. It'll probably be more than enough, but hey, if I have leftovers, it always comes in handy on a future project. Are you guys ready for this? Are you ready for this power wire? Oh man. This is definitely where the bulk of the weight in this box was. Oh. So this, my friends, this is the Colossus Flex Wire. Obviously, I have red and black. Red would be the power wire for connecting your amplifiers and connecting to the distribution block and the battery. And then black for the ground obviously connects your amplifiers and devices to ground. Now within this pile here, there's three different sizes of the two different colors. I have eight gauge, four gauge, and ugh, zero gauge. I stripped away some of the insulation for you guys so we could get a nice up close look here. Now this wire is Oxygen free copper, OFC. In the car audio industry, OFC wire is commonly known as the best wire to get in comparison with CCF or copper clad aluminum wire. Why do people prefer OFC? Well, it has less resistance per unit of length, which means less voltage drop. You're going to lose less power in the wire. Now I've shown this stuff in the past and a lot of you guys have asked me, why does it have a silver color if it's OFC? That's because this wire 
fire is tinned oxygen-free copper. The advantage of being tinned is we won't have oxidation on the wire, which makes this wire great for marine use and so that it doesn't oxidize in your different connections and increase resistance over time. So there, just a little bit of knowledge for you guys that might be new, but again, this stuff is super flexible, easy to manipulate within the vehicle, and I have all of my different sizes. So my largest size is for my main lead and connections to the battery, and then I will distribute the wire from there and go down to a smaller size like four gauge for connecting to the amplifiers and even eight gauge for connecting to some of the smaller devices and distribution blocks within the system. So here's everything laid out for you. And what I want you to take away from this video is that there are kind of four different categories for electrical wiring throughout a car audio install. Category number one is distribution and fusing. Distribution allows us to distribute our different power connections. We have our connectors and our fuses that allow us to actually connect into the vehicle, the battery, our amplifier, those sort of things. And then of course we have our fuses in order to protect the wire. So if a wire does happen to short out, the wire doesn't fail and burn up. Instead, the fuse fails. Category number two here is our power wires. So our connection to the battery, how that transfers as well as back to ground. Those are our power wires, several different sizes. Category number three is our signal to our speakers out of an amplified source. So that is our speaker wire. In category number four are signal wires. Now in this case, I'm using all RCA line level input output wires, but signal wires could also be something like an optical signal wire, or as simple as this, a connection from a phone to an auxiliary input. This is transferring the audio signal prior to amplification and being sent via speaker wires. Now you're definitely gonna wanna stick around and see what I have coming next for this build. If you wanna catch up with this build, check out the video here on screen along with some of my other videos. A special thanks to New Concepts along with John, Brian, Ali, Steve, Emmanuel, Jerry, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. A big thanks to all those guys for helping make these videos possible. If you wanna learn more about the team, you can check that out down below. As always, my friends, you guys rock. Thank you for watching.